the family was evicted from their RV park. It was done inappropriately, perhaps even illegally, left completely unsheltered, nowhere to go, entire family. We have an exclusive. I want to first bring you the video. Here it is. Slides in and get it where it can be moved. Or when the sheriff's department comes here, we will deem it abandoned and it can be drugged just like it is at your cost. Now, I'm sorry. That's, we, so we have been over backwards trying to be, you know. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah, we so. have. Uh, oh, you have. Yes, ma'am, so. we have. Okay, so you uh, want me to willingly give you the key to my property so you can take it to impound. You think I'm stupid? Good luck moving it. You were, Have you fun. were given the paperwork. Yeah, with, a four, with four days on a holiday weekend. Four days. You really think with it being Memorial Weekend, with every park filled up, that we would be able to move it? We don't have a truck, man. Well, it you, sounds you like know. a personal We've problem. Over, Good luck. Over two years, and you know listen, we don't have a truck. It's, it's, it's no problem with me. When the Sheriff's Department gets here, it will be handled. You can either. You know, it's not. It's not abandoned. Right. It's not abandoned. We're paid up. How can it be abandoned? It's paid up until June no, 16th. It's not. Yeah, it, it is. is. I have paperwork to prove it. We have paperwork as well. Put up the picture of the family. A family was evicted on the shortest notice possible. A weekend. A holiday weekend at that from an RV park after their vehicle was broken into by the RV park staff, according to the report. Miss Adrian Thompson and her family had been staying for two years at their location at LaFon's RV park in Princeton, Texas, when the RV park staff broke into their vehicle. Okay, you see a picture there. The break in happened after the family was served a sudden eviction notice right before the Memorial Day weekend, making it impossible to find another RV park to move, to move to by the vacate date listed. The only reason the family was given for the eviction, according to Ms. Thompson, was because they seem, quote, unhappy. This eviction notice came despite the fact that they paid it to next month. We have the receipt of that as well. After the break in, the RV was sent to impound, damaged beyond use, leaving the family homeless in their car in the Texas heat. Ms. Thompson called the police, who even state they spoke to a constable who claimed the eviction should have been handled completely differently. Here's a video. Um, because it's such a, you know, conglomerated thing. Right. Um, we, cause we've been there two years, so imagine a family of five in two years. Like, well, I get it. it. I, I absolutely. That's what, really said, That's what he was saying like, earlier. And it, and it, and, 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 and like I said, we have to kind of ab- abide with what we know. Right. And what, and what other, you know, like I say, a professional constable that does evictions for a living. Right. You know, and he was like, mm. And so we asked him and he, and he, we read, we read him the paperwork and he believed that, you know, he believed that because you'd been there more than 30 days. And I, did he say because of electricity or was that even a part of it? I think it's because of the, 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 the length of time. The length of time. Because you'd been there for more than 30 days, they should have done a regular eviction. And that, you know, and again, I can't say Mr. LaFon may know something that we do not. Right. Um, Mr. LaFon may, but I mean, he also may be treating this as he would be a weekly renter or a daily renter right. or, or something of that nature. And, and be misinformed. Because we receive mail there. So that's considered resident. Uh, we, 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 we've got to figure out what they want to do because it, that's that's where we're at. And we're, we're, not, we're not putting it because I talked to Jay and Jay's like, you to No, Sergeant, you have to figure out what the law is, not what they want to do. What is the law? The law is clear in Texas. You establish residency typically after 30 days. If you have mail coming to the residential environment in which you abide, that is your domicile. That's the law. 
which means in order to move someone off of their stated domicile, you must file a proper eviction notice with the local courts overseen professionally by the constable. None of that happened. You know it was illegal, put them off. Everybody is saying, oh, we're, just, we're just trying to help you and do the best we can here. Nobody's following the law. Nobody's looking at the statute. Nobody is saying, well, Lafon is actually wrong. Hell, that cop even said, maybe Mr. Lafon just knows something we don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Ms. Thompson has been in contact with Sergeant Ray Rhines from the Collin County Sheriff's Office and has filed charges for criminal mischief and breaking and entering. But as of yet, there have been no results. The message, I met with the district attorney's office last week and explained the case to them. They are reviewing the information to try to find a charge that is appropriate and prosecutable. They asked me to follow up with them later this week. Illegal eviction, sir, is a charge that's prosecutable in Texas. We confirm this is an active and ongoing investigation. Our investigators recently met with the district attorney's office on Friday to discuss the case. We are closely collaborating to ensure a thorough review of all aspects. Investigation's duration varies due to complexities, evidence gathering, and collaboration with legal experts. Well, damn, you all do that for every case? I mean, that's a lot for an illegal eviction case. Was the woman there for over 30 days? Did she have male coming to the residential environment? That then is an illegal eviction if the courts were not sought properly in order to affix the eviction notice. There's more. While a swift resolution is important, we cannot provide a specific time frame at this point. Once our investigation concludes and the district attorney's office review is finalized, We can provide you with an update on findings and actions taken by our office if you inquire it again. Inquire about it again. Um, So we're reaching out, we're saying, listen, um, Sergeant, here's the law. What happened was wrong. Um, You all need to provide some information. This family is unsheltered. This family went through an illegal act. You are law enforcement, what are you going to do? We reached out to LaFon's Park, RV Park about the eviction. And owner Randell LaFon refused to respond. Adrian has been attempting to fundraise on GoFundMe. We wanna provide some help for this family. Let me do this, I wanna put up the picture of the family again to remind everyone of how low down these sick SOBs are who work as a system in order to evict somebody because they seemed unhappy. According to her, the only reason they gave was that, well, you just seem unhappy here. Maybe she maybe she talked to them about conditions at the RV park. Maybe there's some rules that she thought were not properly being followed and she had the audacity to say something. All of a sudden, she gets an eviction notice that says, oh, it's because you're unhappy. So we're gonna evict you illegally. In order for this to happen, multiple systems have to work congruent against her, all outside of the context of law. It is not her fault. It is not her children's fault. They need to get back on their feet. The GoFundMe is active. I wanted to make sure there's an opportunity for anyone who would like to participate and give to the GoFundMe, they can do so. All right, we will also provide the link to the GoFundMe directly in the description of this video. I'm asking you to do the very best you can. We'll bring an update as it comes. Jessica, thoughts? 
This is why the narrative that people who are homeless in the United States are drug users or criminals or just bad people in general is so dangerous because so many families across the United States are one accident away from becoming homeless. Sometimes that accident is renting from a landlord that's corrupt and will evict you illegally and then the police and the sheriff will take the landlord's side even when the law is on your side. Median in median income in the United States, if you earn what the, the very middle is when it comes to income, you're still paying over 30% of that on rent in the United States. Median rent is now $2,038. Most low wage workers, which is 40% of the country, are earning $10.66 on the hour, one hour of their work is determined to be worth $10.66. You can't afford rent in this country. In the, the city where I live, Charlotte, North Carolina, where Dr. Ritchie is in Atlanta, Georgia, about 30% of the properties have been bought by investors who are driving up the cost of rent. These are people who will never call the places that they are purchasing home. And they're pushing out people who need a place to live. The homelessness crisis is caused by us allowing investors to turn housing into something that is a profitable enterprise, something that is commodified. And it's just basic sustenance, a basic necessity for people to have a place to live, lay their head and raise their kids. It's very simple and we're letting it happen. And law enforcement is unfortunately on the side of the landlords. And this is the result. It's a problem that's systemic. It's not the fault of this one family or any family that gets evicted and experiences homelessness. Very well said. It's a system issue. Once again, this is a microcosm of a bigger issue, but we continue to tackle it one issue at a time. We'll bring you updates as they come.